In this video, I'm going to talk about the special problem of filtering missing values from a data set. So if you haven't already, create your project and uh, load up your the tidyverse and the mammal life histories data. I'll leave that code up there for a moment if you want to pause and uh, copy it out. The link to the data is in the description, and I'll try and put it into the video as well. Okay. So let's have a look at our data set here. And we know that we've got quite a few uh, missing values here. Um, and so these are going to cause us problems if we try and do certain kinds of calculations. So what, what sort of problems are we going to run into? Well, let's say we wanted to calculate the mean mass of uh, each family. Actually, let, well, let's not do that. Let's just focus on the mean mass for all mammals. So if I wanted to do that, I could use the R, base R function mean, and I'm going to use the data frame MLH, and I'm going to pull out mass.g. So that's what the dollar sign operator does, is it just gives us this ability to access mass.g. So if I just highlight this, and then do control or command enter, I just get a single vector that's got all of those body masses. And you'll see that, so there's missing values in there. So what happens if I try and take the mean? The mean comes back as missing because you, you know it doesn't know what to do with these missing values. So by default, when R does a mathematical calculation, if any of the components of that calculation are missing, the result is missing. So what we need to be able to do is to get rid of those missing values. Now, functions like mean give us an argument that we can use, na.rm, and it's a logical, so we just say true. And then I can run that. And now I get the mean body mass of all of the non-volant mammals as uh, 407,000 grams. Wow, that's big. So mammals are big. Okay, <laughs> those are the ones that we don't have the missing body for. So what's the mean body mass of um, a newborn mammal? Do the same thing. Uh, but now what we want is, let's figure out, dollar sign, I get this handy list that I can just go down through newborn grams. That's what it's called. So the average newborn mammal is 12 kilograms. Um, so this is quite useful, but sometimes we want a little more control over uh, which missing values are being removed. Or we might, for example, if we're doing a data analysis, we might say, I want to get rid of any row that has missing values. So one way to do that is there's a handy function called complete.cases. MLH, and what that's going to do is return um, a vector of true and false, and it's only going to be true if all variables in that row are not missing. So false means it's all missing. So this is one handy way of, with, for, of, for example, we can count how many of our rows have missing data. At least one column has a missing value. And uh, so 264 uh, rows are complete in the sense that they have all of the variables are there. So we could get a complete data set by doing MLH and then using the square brackets together with complete, oops, uh, complete bah, cases, MLH, and then a comma. Okay, so this is going to be a vector of true and false. And so we'll only get the rows where complete cases is true. And then uh, this, the comma then says, and then a second part of the square brackets would be which columns we want. And so this is going to be the, um, if we leave it blank, will be all the columns. So if we do that, we'll get a data set. It's going to be 15 columns. It's only 264 uh, 
long because that's how many complete observations we have. Now, um, if we look back at our data, that you know, some columns have more missing data than others, like the weaning mass is pretty empty, um, whereas gestation month in period, you know, or body mass in grams, these are things that are um, much more, uh, uh, have a lot more values in them. So complete cases is a bit aggressive in this sense because what it's going to do is it's going to pull out uh, rows, is only going to give us the rows that are present for all of the variables. But sometimes we, you know, like if we just wanted to make a plot of gestation or of newborn body mass versus um, mass in grams, we would find uh, that that would be too aggressive. We've run out of data because we there's a lot more rows that have both of those things together. So we might say, well, we could filter and look, let's see what happens if we say filter MLH. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say we want to know uh, which columns of mass gram are not equal to the missing value, NA. You notice R has turned this blue just like it does when we use true logical. It's because NA is a special value. You can't create an object called NA. Well, you probably can, but it's a bad idea. Um, so let's see what happens when we do that. Filter. Okay, we get a tibble with zero rows, so that's not right. So what's going on here? Well, what's going on is that we're asking R to do a calculation of mass grams uh, not equal to missing. And the problem is um, the result of any calculation using a missing value is going to be missing. And so this turns out to be... Um, missing and then a logical uh, missing is just gives us zero. Now the other possibility, let's see what happens if we do equals equals. Yeah, we still get that. So our missing values here are, um, it, it, we can't use this sort of basic filter to uh, pull out the missing values. Instead, we have to use a special function. And so because this is a common problem. We need to filter missing values. So complete cases is one way to do that, okay? But what we want to be able to do is to just get a single column. So what instead, what we can use is the is.na function. So is missing is how we would read that. And we would say mass.g dot and run that. And now we get the 89 rows that have missing for mass. So that's handy, but that's not actually what we want, right? We want to actually have the rows that are not missing. So we use logical not in front of this. So now we are saying is dot na mass grams. So that's going to, this part is be true if mass grams is missing. And then the not, the exclamation point, inverts the truth value. So everything that's true becomes false, everything that's false becomes true, and that's going to be, that'll be true for the ones that are not missing mass in grams. And there we go. So now we've got our 1300 rows. And if we wanted to have a look at the newborns then as well, we could just add a, um, the same condition for newborn grams. And now we've got 816 rows where we have uh, both mass and newborn mass in grams not missing. And that would give us a pretty decent data set in order to analyze that particular kind of problem. So there you go. That's how we would go about filtering missing values from a data set, either very aggressively or more selectively in order to uh, get something that we can make some decent plots with.